knowledge, ilm, is the most powerful thing that is ever there. If you have ilm, you have an immense power. Immense power. Yeah, And that power is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for this reason, that knowledge becomes a very, very important part of the infrastructure of an alim. Okay, so that what is is what makes the brings about the difference between an alim and an abid. Alim is somebody who has immense knowledge, and they use that knowledge in reformation of themselves and reformation of others. Whereas an abid, they don't have that knowledge, or they have very little knowledge in relative to the alim, and they use that little knowledge they have to worship Allah with. What's the biggest difference? The biggest difference is an abid, he does things solely for himself in his connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does an alim do? Alim does it for himself and in particular for others in his connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a big difference. The difference between the heavens and the earth. That's why um, there are many ahadith which do transmit the idea that the alim is on a you know is worth worth many thousands of worshippers in this sense. And that's why even when it comes to the acts voluntary acts of worship, the best voluntary act that an alim can commit themselves to is study, study of knowledge. This is the most valued act that is so immense. There is a hadith in Tirmizi that states that if a student of knowledge a talib ilm somebody who is not in a, even an alim, but he's a student of knowledge, but he's in the path of the saluk of becoming an alim. He is such that if he was to study even a short period through the night, it would be like he has worshipped through the whole night. Subhanallah. It's like he has worshipped through the whole night. So much virtue in being somebody who is considered from the technical terms that we understand from the Islamic point, a talibul ilm, a student of knowledge. 